Good day, this is Russell Hawley coming to you from the Tate Geological Museum, and today I'm going to talk to you a bit about mosasaurs, and that is another group of marine reptiles, and one that has become extremely popular since the release of Jurassic World. Uh, you might recall that's the thing that jumped out of the pool and ate the great white shark. So, quick review. In a previous episode, we looked at various reptile skulls, including the skull of my friend Sid here, who is a lizard, uh, specifically a Komodo dragon, the largest lizard in the world today. And as with any lizard, you can identify it by the holes in its head. A uh, lizard has eye sockets here, nostril openings here, a pair of supratemporal fenestrae in the top of the head, and then down here an embayment where is the lower temporal fenestra, however lacking the quadratojugal bar, the bar of bone that in other reptiles goes from the jugal bone to the quadra uh, quadrate bone here. So if this was a dinosaur or a crocodile or something like that, there'd be a bar of bone there, but zoop, nope, it's gone. And that's how we know that Sid here, uh, as big as he is, is a lizard. Now, whenever I say that the Komodo dragon is the biggest lizard, I always add the biggest lizard today because mosasaurs, for all their size and power, are actually lizards, members of that group. So uh, mosasaurus, uh, is, you can think of it as a gigantic oversized Komodo dragon with flippers, basically. Now, uh, one of the more abundant of the mosasaurs found here in North America is Cladastes. And this is the skull of a Cladastes right there. So this is much bigger than any lizard skull you'll find in Wyoming today. This is one of the smaller mosasaurs. The bigger ones get quite a bit larger than this. Nostril opening, the eye socket, the supratemporal fenestra here, and then here's where that lower temporal fenestra would be if that quadrato jugal bar wasn't missing. Uh, jugal, quadrate, and here once again, no quadrato jugal bar, identifying Cladastes as a lizard. Another cool thing about Cladastes is that, like the other mosasaurs, it has an extra set of teeth growing out of the roof of its mouth. These bones here are called pterygoid bones, and there's extra little teeth coming out of them. They were mobile. When it was alive, those bones could slide back and forth. So if Cladastes was swallowing a fish, those little teeth in the roof of its mouth would zip, 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 just crank that fish right down his throat. So even the slipperiest fish had a hard time getting away from Cladastes. This is, uh, by the way, something that you can also see in modern snakes. Now, as I said, Cladastes is one of the smaller mosasaurs. Here at the museum, we've got a model of a Cladastes skeleton built to the same scale as this skull. So later on this summer, you should definitely come and check that out. But for right now, I'm going to show you the jaws of a much larger species of mosasaur. Right here are the jaws of Tylosaurus, one of North America's largest mosasaur species. This is uh, an incomplete skull, but you can still get an idea of the size of the animal. The rest of Tylosaurus would have looked something like that in life. And look at these teeth. Each one is about the size of a human thumb, and this identifies it as a big game hunter. So this could have made a meal, not only of big fish and sharks and things like that, but even Cladastes might have been on the menu uh, from time to time. So we've got uh, a fish eater here, a big game hunter here, one more kind of uh, mosasaur that has interesting teeth is Globidens. This is a cast of a dentary of a specimen from Kansas. And look at these teeth. They're not shaped like cones. They're shaped like gumballs. So Globidens is thought to have been a shell crusher. So it would have made its living swimming down to the bottom, prying off oysters and clams and crushing them with these hard spherical teeth.